the suburbs that grew up following the Second World War were predominantly an, um, uh, a manifestation of the affluence of the society. Uh, the suburban lifestyle involved um, uh, commuting, um, and uh, that therefore it was an extremely expensive, very extravagant way of life. Uh, a society that can afford to put its whole workforce many, many miles away from the central city uh, and have them commute in by private automobiles is a, is a very rich society. So I would say the, you know, the foremost feature of living in the suburbs, while you were tied to the city, usually for work or shopping and so on, that was still true through the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Uh, before great suburban uh, malls opened up and so on. Uh, th uh, through that period, what you, what you were witnessing was simply uh, a manifestation of, a, uh, of wealth, of affluence that was unprecedented in world history. Uh, m middle class people were being offered the possibility, the opportunity to have a home of their own, a yard of their own, uh, to own automobiles, to become part of what is certainly one of the most wasteful and extravagant uh, patterns of living ever, ever invented, ever conceived of. But we could afford it. America could afford it easily, uh, along with you know endless disposable um, <laughs> uh, merchandise and uh, you know college educations and credit cards galore. I mean, the affluence of that period is a, a landmark. It, it is nothing like what we have now, where we have a sense often of constraints, limits of growth. You know, but through the the period we're talking about here, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, the, those who were living this um, suburban lifestyle in America were um, the heirs, the beneficiaries of an affluence that was unprecedented.